Hi all, welcome to the channel, welcome to my world, the world away. We now got stage 16 of Hero Collector and Eagle Mosses, Build Your Own Ecto-1. <laughs> Now in stage 16 we're going to be finishing off the front suspension and we're going to be working on some of the steering mechanisms and believe me when you see what we've got in here I mean look check this out there's a hell of a lot of bits and pieces and uh, I've looked through the instructions and I thought mm, okay uh, I just want to talk you through the instructions though because there are a couple of things that people have advised me uh, which I need to tell you uh, why I'm going to be doing it different. So here's all the bits. Now we've got the um, stabilizer bar here. We call this an anti-roll bar in the uh, in the UK here. No idea why, uh, but loads of parts for the steering here. And we've got seven different kinds of screws. Uh, we've got LM, we've got BP, we've got DMs, we've got IMs, we've got BMs, and uh, this is what made me nervous. Look, we got MMs. Those who know, no. <laughs> MM screws, God, this is going to be fun, isn't it? Okay, so what we're going to be doing, let's just go to that page. We're going to be putting the stabilizer bar on, then we're going to start attaching the parts for the steering mechanisms. Once they're all in place on here, it wants us to put the wheel on and mount the engine to the chassis. Now, a lot of people are saying to me, Wayne, you don't want to do this yet because in stage 18, you're going to have to turn the car over again and put some parts in underneath. Uh, so it's just a lot easier if you leave the engine off. I'm not doing that. And the reason why is because if you think that this is the last time that you're ever going to have to turn the car over with the engine in it, you're going to have a bad time. Trust me, because uh, you're going to be turning the car over loads if the DeLorean build is anything to go by. I will be putting the engine on and I will be putting this one wheel on here and in the next stage we are going to be attaching another wheel there. So the next stage isn't as in-depth as this one is, but uh, oh, this is going to be a fun one. I'm going to hopefully try and keep this video below 20 minutes, but who knows. If I'm going to have a mistake it will be today. It's Monday today and uh, you know, first day of the week is not normally a good one. So without further ado, let's get cracking. So the first thing we need is the stabilizer bar, looking just like that. And then we need the stabilizer bar linkages, which are gonna go on the ends. Now, if I just bring over this box here, probably best to have my tweezers to get these out. These are the little things that look like dumbbells. One, two, we've got two of those here. Now, these are plastic, just so you know, they're not metal. So for this, we're gonna need BP screws. Get these out. Gonna try and keep these screws in one order over here because uh, there's so many of them in this, uh, in this stage. Load me BP screw up, and then we're gonna be putting one of these linkages just into this section of the uh, anti-roll bar. I keep calling it an anti-roll bar, a stabilizer bar. It doesn't matter which way around they go. They're pretty symmetrical either way. It's gonna be a little bit fiddly to put in though. So what you wanna do is when, you want it, when you've got it straight, sort of hold it straight on your workstation like that. That way you can ensure that when you put the screw in, the screw's actually gonna go straight on it. You don't have to press down too much, but you are in danger. That looks like quite a fragile piece of breaking that off if you don't do it that way. So that's the first one in. We're gonna put the next one in the other side here. Load my screwdriver up. So how is everyone? We've uh, just found out in the UK that we're on lockdown for another three weeks. We were all waiting for a big uh, change yesterday and there wasn't really a big change yesterday, <laughs> so. This is why it's fun doing these builds. Now we need to bring over the chassis, looking just like that. And having it this way round, these linkages here are gonna be facing upright, like that, and they're gonna be going, going underneath these two tabs just here. So when we put them on, they're gonna be going underneath, just like that. Now, we need to hold these in through the top there. They're gonna be held in with BP screws, which are the ones that we used just a second ago. So I'm going to put these in, but we want to put them in really loose. And the reason for that is because we've got to put some hinges on to keep this attached here to the chassis there. So you see, I've only put it on lightly. I'll put the hinges on next and then we'll tighten everything up. Now we do need to make sure when we do this that the wheels are centered straight. So I'll just get this one in. Just like that. As you can see, I've made sure that the wheels are pointed in this direction. So we're all ready now to put the brackets over the top of this stabilizer bar. Now, the good thing about these brackets is that as you can see here, you've got a little lug on there, which is gonna position it into these holes here. And you've got the other one, just the other side there. So we get the first one in, just into this side here, making sure that lugs on. 
So that's the first one on there. That's gonna be held in place with BM screws. So we are going into metal on this one. Once again, when I'm going into metal, I do prefer to put a bit of oil in there so it actually goes in nicely. So I've got a pin lined up here. I'm just gonna drop some oil in these. Now someone did recommend, why don't you uh, just drop or do this if I get a screw load the screw up and then dip the screw in the oil it's another good idea it's just that if the screw falls off I'm going to get an even bigger mess than I was before so that's why I prefer to do it my way plus I think that doing it that way actually lifts up a bit too much oil I've got a little bit too much oil on there now so I will take that off but this is the first hinge going in just like that that's all tight so we're going to do the same on the other side so now the lug section on this one, where it was pointing towards the front, on this one, it's actually pointing towards the back. So we, we just reverse the way around it goes, so it sits in just like that. Let's load the screw up again, and uh, I will try your uh, technique again. I'm just gonna dip the uh, top of the screw in. Now I can tell you straight away, it picks up far too much oil. I really don't need that much oil on the build, so I will uh, do it my previous way. But you know, I do try things so you, uh, all your ideas you give me, I'm happy to have ideas. Just to see if we can make things easier. <laughs> and here's the uh, the last screw going in here now. Just like that, tighten that down. Make sure these are really tight. And now I'll go back and just tighten the top of these stabilizer bar connectors on each side. So that's nice and secure, nice and tight. I'm still able to move the wheels here so that's brilliant I'm gonna put that to one side for a second because we're gonna assemble the steering arms now for that we're gonna need the idler arm bracket which looks like that this is metal and we're also gonna actually need the idler arm which looks just like that holding this this way round we're just gonna put this idler arm underneath like that we need to secure it from the top as you can see it actually just comes out it's gonna need a screw of a flange on that screw is a KM screw so I've got them here there's two in the pack which makes me think one of them is actually a spare. It's brilliant for uh, Hero Collector here to actually give you spares for this build. I did have a a pillbox made up, as you saw, a Ghostbusters pillbox. Um, looking just like that. And to be honest with you, I haven't really had to use it at all at the moment. So uh, uh, when I put that screw in, I've just noticed that this screw can't tighten up. It can go in, but it can't tighten up all the way. So uh, it's not falling out, but I think it's just in there to actually just keep that into place. Once again, we're bringing over the chassis, but I'm turning it upside down this time. And this piece here is just gonna go onto this side. As you can see, there is subtle differences between the two sides here, but we want the one with the one lug, ho lug hole. This is just gonna go over the top and sit just like that. We're gonna secure this in from this side. It's gonna be secured in with an LM screw. Once again, this is going into metal. So I will... Uh, Touch a little bit of uh, oil on there. And when I say a little bit, I'm just talking about a pin, tiny pin head worth. I really don't need to swamp it, so that's in. And we'll get this tightened up. Make sure this is nice and tight because we're gonna be turning it over in a minute. We're not gonna get a chance to uh, tighten it up. There we go, nice and tight. As you can see, that's not moving at all. Then we're gonna turn it over we need to attach that now to the steering rack. Now, you can see that I've done a problem here because this is actually gonna sit on top, just like that, uh, but the holes for it are actually underneath at the moment. So what I'm gonna have to do is switch this steering bar around. See, I make mistakes, so you don't have to. So this is an easy fix. I've just flipped it over the way it needs to go. Put this side back in, nice and tight. Do the same with the other side over here. I didn't take the screws out all the way just so it's easier to line up. Put that in the hole and then now, nice and tight, there we go. Now as you can see the holes are pointing up right there and obviously it still turns. Remember, I make mistakes so you don't have to. What it means now is we can actually put the idler arm here over the top of the steering rack here, and we're gonna secure this into place with a DM screw. So I'll get that out. You know what, I'm glad I've made that mistake because if I've made it, hundreds of you have probably made it. 
So, uh, but how many of you are going to admit to making it? <laughs> I do it so that you don't have to. I keep saying that. There we go. So that's that side in just like that. Now we're going to be putting the steering pinion in. So we're going to be turning this upside down and we're going to be working on this side over here. And the first thing we need is the pinion base, which looks just like that. This is metal as well, just so you know. It's going to fit this way around. So it's going to be going down onto the chassis, just into this section here. And it actually fits like a glove. So you can see exactly how this goes in. Now it's going to be held in with two different kinds of screws. This end here, towards this end of the chassis up here, it's going to be held in with a DM screw. So I'm going to put a DM screw in here now. Just like that, nice and tight. Then the end at the back here is held in with an LM screw, which I've got just to the right of me here. See, I, there is an order to my madness of where I put my uh, screws. And that's just going to go into the hole at the back there just like so. I've already put some oil in this, so it should hold nice and tight there. Then we need the steering pinion, which looks just like that. That's actually just gonna go through that, like that, looking like that on that side. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna turn it over without this pinion falling out. So I'm just holding that in with my ha hand there. And then we're gonna be putting the, the pinion arm just onto the end of this. Now the pinion arm, as you see, is shaped. So it's the same shape as this one. So it can only go in one way. It's going to fit over the top just like that. Now this is going to be held in over the top there with a DM screw. So I'll get one DM screw lined up just to keep this in place so I don't have to keep my finger underneath it. Just like that. Make sure this is nice and tight. We don't want any woggle with this one. There we go. And then we're going to attach the other side to the steering rack here. And obviously through this side here, it's going to be held in with DM screws as well. I have dropped that into some oil because this is going to be a little bit fiddly to do. But uh, we'll get this in. It's going in absolutely lovely there. I don't want to bend it too much, but I do want to make sure it's attached so that when I can turn this, as you can see, it's quite stiff to turn now, but it does hold itself where it needs to go. That looks absolutely brilliant. Now, I'm having a think. Now, I haven't done these overly tight, but I think I've done them tight enough so they don't fall out. The reason I'm bringing that up is because um, with lots of use of doing that, I'm wondering if they're gonna work loose. But I'm looking at the screws at the top here. They don't seem to be moving around. But this is a really strong, put together suspension, um, which is really good. Uh, I can see this holding the weight of the vehicle big time. So now we're going to add the steering column, which means turning it round, just like this, if I have it that way round. We're going to be working on just this section here, the pinion section we worked on. Now, when we put the steering rack on, obviously it's just going to fit on the higher section there, down to the lower section. So it's going to sit in at an angle just like that. Uh, but what we need to do is, if you can see on the end here, it's got a like semicircular sort of shape. You can see that on my hand probably is a bit better there. We need to make sure that the flat section is facing down. So when I put this in just like that, that flat section here is facing down. So I'm gonna keep that into place, put the housing cover, which looks like this and it is metal, over the top. That'll keep that lodged in just like that. And then we're gonna secure this with four screws, two DM this side, but on the other side, <laughs> here we go it's the mm screws now i'm sure these aren't like the mm screws we're all used to and if anyone doesn't know the in joke on this <laughs> uh we had mm screws on the delorean build and they were uh, an absolute living nightmare <laughs> because the mm screws go in the outside here because they uh they had a habit of the heads breaking off of them but uh, as you can see here They've gone in absolutely perfectly. So I'll get these DM screws in the other side here. Nice and tight. That's one. I have already dropped some oil into these. So that they uh, they fit perfectly. But yeah, it is important to make sure that the steering... Oh, tight that up. Steering rod here is pointing in the right direction down because you're not going to be able to change this afterwards. 
and there you go that looks just like that as you can see when i turn the wheels here because obviously you want to make sure the wheels are straight when you put this section in because if they're bent then obviously it's going to turn offset there which you don't want to do so when you actually put that pinion in and you're lining it up make sure that they're completely straight so that when it's finished as you can see here it is pointing straight down if you don't do that it means the steering wheel is going to look weird when you actually put the steering wheel in now it wants us to put the engine in now as i mentioned before i am going to put the engine in even though uh, doing so means I've got to be very careful when I turn it upside down. Uh, but as you can see on the bottom here, we've got the brackets that we're putting on the engine. One there, one there. They're going to sit into these holes here and here to attach it. The other point we've got is just on the end of the gearbox here, which is going to fit onto the hole just here. So I'm going to line this one up first, I think. And then line the others up afterwards. Making sure... That it sits in perfectly which by the look of these uh brackets underneath it has so the two parts directly under the engine are going to be held in with im screws so i'm going to turn this over gently because i'm going to want to put two screws into the holes here and here and these are im screws it does balance itself there look that's good and i think this time because this is holding so much weight i am going to take your advice and uh drop top of the screw into that nice mixture I've got there and we get the first IM screw in here I'm being very gentle just putting that in just a touch before I get the next IM screw and I'll put that in the other side and then we'll tighten that up this is definitely one of those hold your breath moments right now I'm going to tighten that up as tight as I can get it on both sides so that engine's not going anywhere now just like that and then we've got the one screw just to put in this end here just uh, past the sump there that's going to be held in with an LM screw so I've got one of these here again a little bit of oil put this in this way Make sure that's nice and tight. We don't want this engine wobbling around at all. And there you go. Nice and secured. I'm just seeing if anything's popped out while I've been doing that. And it does look absolutely brilliant. The uh, oil dipstick's still in there. Everything's still in there. So uh, that worked out pretty well. But that's what it's now looking like with the... Uh, engine on top and as you can see even though it's on top you've still got perfect control of the steering there which means we're now going to be putting on the first wheel now the it wheel was from issue four looking just like that we hadn't done anything to it i kept it into the uh pack here and as you can see we've still got the hub cup or the hub cover the nut cover just over the top there which we are going to be putting in now this wheel is going to be going into this side of the car which i guess is the left side of the car and quite simply it's just going to go over the spindle there to fit in perfectly just like that it's going to be held into place with one screw which is the lm screw so i've got one of them here again it's going into metal i am going to put the tiniest bit of oil on this and then we're going to secure it just through this hole here making sure that that tire is straight in there and then tighten this up as hard as i can get it because again we don't want no wheel wobble so i'm just checking that note that wheel's on absolutely perfectly put the cap over the top just like that pushing it into place and there we go that's the first wheel on i do have one more thing left to do and that's these power steering hoses here see you thought i'd forgot them but i hadn't we need to put these power steering hoses on now the good news is that they actually go on with the engine this way around and what you'll see if i have a close-up here is we've got some little now i've been told not to use the word nipple <laughs> but i'm going to use it anyway we've got two nipples just coming off the steering rod housing there we're going to be putting both of these in each side of that so i'll get them in now probably best to use my uh tweezers for this push the first one in that's the first hose in do the same with the second hose 
and that's the second hosing. And then basically these are just going to go into the back of this section here, which is the uh, power steering pump, I'm guessing. So we're going to put these two hoses just into the two lugs extrusions just at the back here. So I'll do that now. Probably best to do the back one first. I'm actually going to pass this underneath the, uh, the HT leads here, I think. It'll make it a little bit tidier. And boy, you are going to need a... Uh, you are going to need some tweezers for this. A little bit fiddly to get in, this one's going to be. That's the first hosing. That was a little bit difficult. Because it is hidden away down there. And here's the second hose. And if anyone is wondering, yes... I'm using my tweezers and I am using my glasses here because that was fiddly uh, but that's now in as you can see those two hoses there just into the back of that section there but that's all there is to do in this issue I enjoyed that immensely I love the challenging ones and as you can see it looks impactful any issue where it really comes together and makes the thing grow and look a lot better than it actually uh, seems when you're actually just doing the little parts and focusing you can now focus back and just see how good that actually is let me just show you on the side camera as well look I'm so happy with how that looks and uh, I don't even think the video is doing it justice for how big this thing actually is. But uh, you can still get hold of this yourself. If you want to get hold of this, if you're in the UK or the US, there's two different, uh, I think it's going to be over this side, there's two different addresses. If you go over to those addresses, type in that in exactly like you see there, that will take you to the uh, Eagle Moss site. They'll know you've been sent as well from the World of Wayne website because obviously uh, these are tracked, these uh, little URLs here, which is excellent. Uh, and you can build this for yourself, and I'm sure you'll agree, it's absolutely amazing where we're up to at the moment. In issue 17, we are going to be doing the tire, but that's probably not going to be till next week. I am making these last a little bit through the month. But if you did like that video, please remember to give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, please remember to subscribe. Other than that, take care.